Thank you for joining us. Before we get started on today's episode, just a quick reminder to please smash the like button in the bottom right corner and subscribe to Locked On Senators so you can be the first to know when new content arrives. The best way to help us grow is to comment on the video as well. So let us know if this is a player you want the Sens to draft or you think they should stay away from and let us know why as well. This is one of 64 draft profiles that we're producing. So let's get into it. All right, Pilsy, coming in at number 58 on our draft rankings with an average of 54.33, a defenseman, Ooh, Isaiah George from the London Knights. Yeah, Isaiah George is a very intriguing prospect, Ross, for, for a number of reasons. Uh, first, He's got decent size. You get that nice six, like you were talking about, beside Ooh. his name. Six foot one, 194 pounds. Now, he is a left shot defenseman, so you don't get that uh, the right shot that you're looking for. But this is a guy we haven't really talked about a defining attribute for players before in today's episode yet. This guy has one. Isaiah George is an exceptional skater, Ross. Like, they... Um, he was selected to play at the CHL Top Prospects game, so not a big deal. That's a good showcase for him. And he was posting better skating times than Shane Wright. Heard of him? He Out of the top five skaters, he posted the fourth best numbers as a defenseman with some size. And it, it's his rookie season in the OHL. With the London Knights, 67 games played, six goals, 17 assists, good for 23 points. And I'm very intrigued in Isaiah George. And that's where our rankings go. We know Elite Prospects does so much of their focus on skating. And they have them ranked at 38 on their list. Just out of the first round. 38. Whereas Bob McKenzie has them at 55. Craig Button at 70. So divisive in the world of prospect rankings for him. But I think because we know Craig and Bob have one more rankings coming up. I think we're going to see Isaiah George rise a little bit. Now... Not the best season in terms of production, at least at the end, offensively. He's a guy who finished the year with just one goal, two assists for three points in his last 10 games. Dash four again. That's not what you're really getting. It's that skating to defend, you know, like not an overly physical, but a guy who's defense first and relies on his skating to allow the rest of his game to come through. Still 23 points in 67 games. I mean, respectable numbers. For a young defenseman, again, we have to say it. I know you're getting sick of hearing it, but we are doing a lot of OHL guys right off the bat. He missed an entire year of development at such a crucial age where he should have been transitioning from junior or from OHL or sorry, from minor hockey into the OHL. This is a guy who played in the GTHL, one of the most prestigious leagues in minor hockey in Canada for the Toronto Marlboros. But still, again, the offensive numbers even there didn't jump out. He's just that modern day defensive defenseman. Would you say that's a fair analogy analysis? I, I actually think I wouldn't quite uh, put him as an off uh, defensive defenseman, Ross, because Knights assistant coach Dylan Hunter he talked about uh, George's ability to balance offense and defense and finding okay. ways to stay valuable uh, and stay in this lineup as a rookie. He also highlighted that George had no issue playing the right side. So when you get a defenseman that has Decent size, decent skating, ability to play offensively and defensively, and can play both sides, you're adding a lot of value as a prospect. And I think you mentioned how he didn't really finish the season off strong. I wasn't able to find a scoop on this or, or a confirmed reason, but he didn't play any playoff games. And the London Knights, Interesting. they were in the playoffs, and he didn't play any of those games. So maybe we're looking at a lingering injury that happened, and then they shut him down at the end of the season. That's something we'd have to look into. I wasn't able to find it. But I really like Isaiah George. And even uh, I was only kind of able to find London Knights uh, uh, people quoting him, which... If you're a fan of the OHL, you know London Knights, they have no issues pumping their own tires. So I wasn't surprised by that. But Rob Simpson, the Knights associate manager, he complimented his ability to cover a lot of territory on the ice 
retrieving pucks and transitioning the puck up the ice. So he's he uses that skating to get all over the place. And when he's got decent reach, he's able to pick out those uh, gaps, have good gap control and stop all the other teams from getting into the zone. And then he can retrieve the puck and bring it up the other way of the ice as well. So Isaiah George, for me, has a lot of great uh, great factors here. I gave him four four stars, Ross, because... A defenseman that can skate like him, like I mentioned, top five in skating statistics when they do the drills at the CHL top prospect game. When you can start with a great skater that can play offense, defense, and both sides, that's incredible value. So I like Isaiah George a lot, four to five stars for me. When you were talking about playing both sides, it brought me back to what Brad Berry told Tyler Clevin. Instead of competing for three jobs at the next level. There you go. All of a sudden, you're competing for six. Yep. So it certainly opens up a lot of options as we pull up his Elite Prospects page. Isaiah George, a native of Oakville, Ontario. He's a February 2004 birthday, so already 18 years old. We mentioned 6'1", 194 pounds. Elite Prospects loves him. They're higher on him than anybody else, having him 38. And you can see here, again, these pesky zeros, man. I feel for these yeah, kids not being able to get out there on a consistent basis. A plus 23 rating, say what you want about plus minus, but being able to be that high in the plus is certainly doing something right. 23 points in 67 games. As you can see, though, there are certain areas where he's playmaking, he's getting some assists, but just in terms of box score, I don't think it tells the whole story on Isaiah George. He's the type of player where I think the sum of his parts is much more than what you see on the score sheet each and every night. So I'm going to go 3.5 stars just because, again, and maybe I'm contradicting myself in the sense that, you know, I say that they've graduated all these centermen, it's time to reload. But at the same time for Ottawa, left shot yeah. defenseman, Shabbat, Brandstrom, Sanderson, you're hoping that's the left side for the next decade. Honestly. <laughs> right? Maybe Brandstrom can be interchangeable, but you're looking at probably a more veteran piece, if not Tyler Clevin, who's going to step up into that role. I just think that if you're looking and – yeah, maybe the right side, you you always want to continually have people in the system, but the right side, you've got Gannett, JBD, and Lassie Thompson. So, like, is that even something that you really need? Or is Ottawa more looking at a left-shot defenseman to kind of replenish the system after that? So, I think it's going to be really interesting, but for me, three and a half stars for Isaiah George.